I see Lenskart in the next five years becoming the world's biggest optical company and dispensing more specs than any other company has ever done any on a daily basis, right? And the idea is to put a pair of specs on everybody's eyes who needs them in India. So the fact of the matter is it's a huge problem in India. Like I said earlier, about 75% of Indians need vision correction and only 30% of those have access to infrastructure and facilities. Um, so there's a, well, it seems like a very niche market, but the need is so huge and the numbers are really, really large for us to solve just this one problem correct, right? So the idea is to, to solve a very big problem correct. We had other websites, uh, namely Watchcard, Bagscard, Jewelscard, which we've now consoled into Lenscard. And that's the prime focus of the company to move forward and solve the vision problem of India. And it's a beautiful vision, right? Because um, if you can help people see, it's, it kind of motivates everyone to work harder every day. Lenscart has already opened about 80 stores span India, and we're going to open about on a month-to-month -month basis more of these stores. Uh, the need is the need is a consumer need, right? The idea is to reach as many consumers and customers as you can and help them get high quality, affordable vision correction solutions, right? And this becomes another channel for us to reach customers and our consumers who would then get the access to experience the Lenscart brand and products. I think it was, a, it was more of a personal choice and I had spent about five years in my company, it's a great company, it's doing really well and it's a great mission. In fact, I was the one who conceptualized the idea of Let's in turn. Um, and I think there's still, it's a long, there's a long way to go and about in eight years or six years it'll become a mainstream company and I personally wanted to step out and step back a little bit and do something different for some time and uh, who knows, I might be back there soon. This was a very unique role. I was helping with transformation and HR structuring, and kind of my job was to put structures for people. And even my current role in in Lenscart, there's a lot of people management. So there's a entire workforce of 300 people, you know, on the on the field, meeting customers every day. Then there's the back end teams of operations or customer support. The huge people. Uh, structure that we have to manage in Lenscar and a lot of those learnings are coming in handy to be able to effectively manage people in the business at Lenscar. I have the fondest memory of my ISEC times. Okay, this is my first job as a, for a not-for-profit based in Bombay. As a fresher, I was working in refining the vision and running the operations of an entire company that, or an organization I would call, which was about 10,000 people strong and in, in the most formative years, I learned so much. So my fondest memory will always be ISEC because that set me up for everything else I've done in life. And that was the most unique experience I've ever had and probably will have. Uh, most of our memories uh, are definitely fond. I don't think there's been any memory which uh, was not fond. If it were, it's probably forgotten. Um, I think one of the f the first <laughs> the first memory was uh, when I came to campus and this campus it was not this one it was the one at uh, Sainapati Babur Road. So you walk in and you need to figure out where your uh, you know your name list is to figure out which class you want to be a part of. And I remember that when I got my SNAP uh, scores, I was at just about made the cutoff. And uh, I go in and I see this uh, rank list and they say Vijay Thomas. Uh, rank one. So I go, wow, there's one more Vijay Thomas in this batch. <laughs> I mean, how, how could it be? So I'm walking around and trying to, you know, meet people and ask them, you know, what's your name? They say, I think, where the hell is the other Vijay? So right after that, we were in the auditorium and uh, the, the director comes and uh, this this big facilit felicitation ceremony and they say, okay, the guy who's got the highest rank, uh, uh, Vijay Thomas. So I'm like, okay, I need to find out where that guy is. No one's getting up. <laughs> so, uh, me? <laughs> So I think by the time they 
added all the scores together for GDPI and, and, and just somehow I, I became uh, up there. But the pressure and was, was so on you because everybody thought that you're this genius, you know. <laughs> and having to live up to the fact that I was not the person that they thought I was, uh, was what I did for the next two weeks. So yeah, that, that memory was, was, was pretty fond. And yeah, that was the first ever memory at uh, SIBM. I had a chance to enjoy the city a lot more. Uh, probably it would have been easier to watch your first day first show movie because you were in a theater right now and the multiplex E Square was right there. Uh, food was good. So yeah, uh, it had its charm too, for sure. Well, your lungs certainly feel much better here. <laughs> the air feels fresher. There's, uh, the view is much better. I mean, I remember waking up in my apartment on, in model called me uh, to see another apartment in front of me and then you look a little further you see another apartment um, I guess for somebody who enjoys nature uh, this is paradise you know we used to come trekking here uh, in, in the monsoons uh, it was a lot of fun I would recommend that if there is something that somebody enjoys doing and if you can make that your career, uh, don't give it up. It may not be easy, uh, definitely difficult to, f to get into that line. But if you are there, if you're doing what you love, uh, no day would be boring. Uh, you could contribute a lot more in that line than in a line that you're not interested in. So follow your passion, uh, be persistent, and if you are, you will get what you want.